Then the last Sunday of December celebrates the Holy Family. The gospel reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. Just before that, verse 21 says, And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The law called for circumcision after eight days. The eighth day represents a new beginning. On the seventh day after the creation, God rested, so God sets aside the seventh day of the week for us to rest. The next day, the eighth day, is a new beginning. The child's name is given at circumcision, as Abram's name was changed to Abraham when he was circumcised. Then the reading begins at verse 22. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate of the law of the Lord. Verse 22, the law calls for days of Mary's purification. This is after 32 days after the circumcision. She needed to be purified as she was considered unclean, as all women were who gave birth. This is due to being a sinner. So the sacrifice offered here in the temple was offered for her purification. She needed a savior just like everyone else, as she was also a sinner. And verses 23 and 24, quoting the law of the Lord, is from the book of Exodus chapter 13. Then the reading continues, verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Messiah of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. So in verses 26 to 32, Simeon was so in tune with God that the Holy Spirit informed him that he would see the Messiah before he died. When we are at peace, when we know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're prepared to leave this earth. I heard a particular story from one Bible teacher who talked about his aunt, who, being at peace with the Lord in her old age, told her family that she would be leaving this earth what time and what day she would be going. She said, I'm leaving tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. She went on her front porch, sat in a rocking chair, and that's when she left. Verse 31 says, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples. This says that the coming of Jesus as the Messiah was not hidden. It's for everyone to see. And then verse 32 repeats the prophecies of the Old Testament that the Messiah will be the light a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for the people of Israel. This is from Isaiah chapter 42, verse 6. Then the reading continues at verse 33. Child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. So verse 33, it says they were amazed at what he was saying about Jesus because they had no idea who Simeon was. And in verse 34, it says that this child is destined for the fall and will be a sign. A sign is the same as a testimony. It's a witness that Jesus is the witness to bring forth the truth about the salvation of humanity. And in verse 35, talking about Mary, and it says, and you yourself, a sword will pierce. Simeon is prophesying that Mary's soul, 
her mind and emotions, not her spirit, would be confronted, challenged, and troubled when Jews reject Jesus as the Messiah, basically telling her that the child she bore and raised was not the Holy One, the Messiah. Jesus will be vindicated when he is resurrected, which also vindicates Mary. Continuing the reading, verse 36, there was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. So it tells us her husband dies when she's young. She doesn't remarry. And she, now she's a widow at 84. Verse 38, when she sees Jesus, she continues to tell all others to look for the redemption of Jerusalem, speaking about this child. Then the reading concludes, when they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. So in verse 39, when it says they'd fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law, it was the eight days before Jesus was circumcised, and then the 32 days of Mary's purification, and then they went to the temple. And that's a total of 40 days. We see 40 days occur many times throughout the scriptures. So these are the gospel readings throughout the season of Advent through December. It's the most joyful season, and our family wishes you and your family a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, as we now enter the Advent season, we thank you, Lord, that it just fills our hearts with joy every year. But we know that joy needs to be in us, not just during the season of Advent and Christmas, but throughout the entire year. So we thank you, Lord, that you're going to continuously fill us with your joy, that your joy will be our strength. We thank you, Lord, that as we study the readings, that they become an important part of us knowing who you are, that they tell us the truth about you being the redeemer of humanity, that you being the one who we bring into our spirits, bring into our hearts, bring into our lives, that you come to live with us when we accepted you as our Lord and Savior. So we thank you, Lord, that as we study this, that it becomes big within us. It helps us also to share it with others who need you in their lives. So we thank you for that opportunity to do so as well. And we receive and accept this lesson in thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go, our Bible study will return on January 3rd, 2024. Same time, same channel, when the readings will be about the epiphany of the Lord when the Magi visits the Holy Family. So have a wonderful Christmas, and we'll be back with you then.